so I'm autistic and people have asked me if I take things literally and I would have to say no because that's kleptomania and I'm autistic, not a kleptomaniac. But if you close your Emotional vanity Emotional vanity Emotional vanity Emotional vanity Go ahead and tell everybody I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man Yes I am, yes I am, yes I am Hey, I'm gonna go sit in that bathroom because this party is getting really loud and I think I'm experiencing sensory overload. Just a lot of activity going on. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm close to a meltdown. What? A meltdown? Oh, did I see meltdown? <laughs> what I actually meant was, um, I'm feeling social anxiety and I need to go take a break. Oh, anxiety. <laughs> Duh, totally get that. Do your thing, girl. Yeah, I'm quirky. What can I say? <laughs> This is a public service announcement for all my chemically imbalanced cuties out there and my neurodivergent traumatized hotties. Uh, just because your trauma isn't considered capital T trauma doesn't mean that it's not still trauma. So feel that shit, heal that shit, and for the love of God, stop dating men. Oh yeah, no, I've been drinking coffee since I was like 12 years old. All that caffeine at such a young age is probably why you have ADHD. Actually, caffeine can help with some of the symptoms, so it's probably the only reason I made it through middle school without getting diagnosed. That doesn't make any sense because caffeine makes you hyper. I just drank a Red Bull and it sent me into a two hour coma nap. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my nightmares. Stay me right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? Silhouettes of you are like a tongue. Never really noticed what you want. What do you mean? You can just turn your fucking brain off? How the hell do you do that? Oh my god, it's super easy. I just. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Woo, trauma. Here's why autistic people, like myself, watch the same movie over and over again. One reason, life is very unpredictable. Once you've watched a movie you really like, you can watch it over and over again because you know what's gonna happen. And the chaos of not knowing what happens dissipates. Another reason is that it could be a stim. Kinda like if you listen to the same song over and over and over and over and over again. That's actually a form of stimming. My current stim song for when I'm driving is That's Life by Frank Sinatra. The last reason is because that film could become a special interest, which is what happens to me. There are some movies I like so much I know everything about that movie. What awards that movie won and lost and what it lost to. The actors who starred in it, the actors who were almost in it. For example, The Big Lebowski, I could quote that movie line for line. Yeah, like the worst kind of person is someone who makes someone feel bad, dumb, or stupid for like being excited about something. Yeah. The store oh, sounds really overwhelming right now. Idea. What if I run into I somebody I know? Store. And no one's going to be wearing a mask? Walgreens? In a minute, I'm gonna need a. I wish I had brought I my other well poppet. Last night. I'm hungry, I but I don't want to eat anything. Why did I even leave? Nothing really feels real anymore. Right Please I stop. I swear, you are like the only one I have left. I am this close to falling off the deep end. <laughs> I know I'm smiling right now, but the light inside me is dying. Uh, what? But Neurodivergent people, what's the most annoying and innocuous thing that neurotypical people say to you? I'll go first. If it's important, you'll remember. Do you know how many fucking important things I've forgotten about, Janet? Shut the fuck up! Hey, neurodivergent TikTok, who's your comfort OTP, and why is it the one with the autism and the one with the age? Hey, what do you struggle the most with with your ADHD? Feelings of anxiety and paranoia. But those aren't direct symptoms of ADHD, so why would you mislead everyone into thinking that those are actual symptoms of ADHD? I never said that they were, it's just the hardest part of my life having ADHD.
What does that even mean? Why would you feel paranoid for having ADHD? Because every single day, I just assume that there is something that I'm not remembering, not aware of, or didn't hear properly of the first time somebody told me. Am I supposed to pick up my kids from school today? Did I remember to let the dog in last night after I let her outside? Is the oven on? Did I remember to take my medication? When my wife was talking to me about something very important today, did I actually hear all the information? Or did my brain just think that it heard all of the information, but I missed the most important part? Oh man, and that's what you struggle with the most? I really wish that I could say that it was, but it's only second to feeling like you do actually have your shit together, come to find out that you don't and you do miss something important and then that reinforces the original thoughts that you had. That sounds annoying. No, you know what's annoying is remembering that you're not remembering something. That's annoying. If you love somebody with a neurodivergency like ADHD or autism, I have some advice for you. And it's not fun advice but it's advice that might quite literally save a life someday. Familiarize yourself with the uncommon symptoms of depression. Depression affects neurodivergent people at a much higher rate. About 30% of people with ADHD struggle with depression, and that number jumps to 40% in autistic individuals. So statistically, if you have a neurodivergency, you're about three to four times more likely to have depression than a neurotypical person. But depression doesn't look the same on everybody. You might want to pause to read, but these are the conventional symptoms of depression, and these are the less common symptoms. My depression looks a lot more like this list than that list. So for a long time, I didn't realize that I had depression, but neither did the people around me. And so making yourself familiar with these symptoms can be really helpful, especially if your partner is struggling in a way that they haven't necessarily struggled before. I also put some resources in my bio if you want to learn more. Hi, I've been made aware of doom boxes, which is apparently a thing where ADHD people make boxes or bags of things that they just don't really have a place for. And look, I did not request to be called out like this. And Hey, hey, dude, why is it such a mess in here? No, it's a mess because I'm cleaning. What do you mean? Why'd you have to make such a mess to be able to clean? No, it's because I had so many things that belong in other parts of the house that ha all happened to be in this room. So I, I had to get them all together and sort through them and organize them to put them back in the parts of the house they belong in. But why? Why do you have so many things from other parts of the house in here? What? I mean, just look at you. You're like a like a raccoon or a, a, a hermit crab. I don't know which animals collect things, but you're like that animal. Oh, why do I have so many things from other parts of the house? in this one particular room. Why do you have so many things from other parts of the house in this one particular room? Well, I mean, it's not that bad. You, you have you have both the oven mitts in here. Why did you need two? Sempre poca lara del mano bene Se ci picchia bande se Hey, do you mind dimming those lights a little bit? It's kind of disturbing me and I'm having a little bit of sensory overload right now. Like, it's actually hard to concentrate on what you're saying. When did you get so high maintenance? Like, Jill. Oh, um, did I say sensory overload? What I actually meant was that my mercury is in retrograde and it's throwing my Leo sun off. <laughs> I'm just a little sensitive right now. Oh, oh, of course. Duh, I got you, girl. I have hyperfixations. I have special interests. What are hyperfixations like? So basically, if something in particular catches my interest, I can focus or obsess over it for weeks at a time. Sometimes even months. I consume everything there is to know about it, and then I just kind of am done. <laughs> it, like, it's not that I don't like the thing anymore, it's just that it doesn't quite feel the same. Can you hyperfocus? Yes! Me too! Especially when it comes to my special interest. What's that? So basically, something in particular catches my interest, and then it runs my entire life. What? Yeah, like most of what I do or speak about for a while is gonna be about that thing. It can last for months or even years. It basically becomes like an entire part of my identity. Really? Yeah, you know those islands of personality in Inside Out? Yeah! Yeah, that's my brain. That's like literally what my brain is like. Special interest after special interest. They all combine to become an entire part of my identity to the point where when a special interest no longer interests me, it feels like I've lost an entire part of myself. Wow, that is intense. Yeah. You and I are so similar, but we're different and that's okay. 